I'm figuring out how to use this stuff. Okay, I took a picture from the book I use um, many moons ago. Um, you're doing even numbers, so you're doing number two. So uh, is negative one and five a solution? The answer is no. Okay, here's the reason why. If you substitute in, this one is your x, this one is your y, right? So you substitute in your y, let's say, is 5. This equation right here, I'm putting in 5 there. Okay. Um, equals to negative x, negative, that's, um, and then x, x is negative 1. So you got double negative becomes a positive, okay? Um, plus the 4. That works for the first equation, so that, that sets in, that works. Now for the second one, though, um, so it satisfied this one as an answer. That's a good one. But on the second one, it doesn't. It says y, put place 5 here for y and um, negative 1 here for x. So showing your work on your paper, guys, is 5. Does that equal to negative 1 over 5 times negative 1? No, because 5 does not equal to 1 over 5. So no, it, it doesn't satisfy this system. It only works for one, doesn't work for the other, so it doesn't work. The answer is no. Number 4, you do the same thing. You use the same um, the same ordered pair, okay? So use the graph paper that I give you. Number four, you use um, negative one for x right there. And um, negative one for uh, ne uh, five for y. And see if it works. This is a negative one. And show your work here, please. It's I'm doing this on paper just to teach you guys. Okay, on number four, that's what you're doing. Anyways, okay, so show your work there. And your answer is yes, it does make both equations true. Okay, and make sure you, um, the answer is yes. Negative one. Okay, you know what, I'll better yet. I will camera on what the answer says. Right there. Yes, negative one five makes both equations true. How do I exit out, guys? Okay. Cancel. Well, that would do good. Okay, number five. You do number six. Gonna graph. Uh, Check your solution. You don't have to check, just graph it. So make sure you do number six. Here's how you graph. Okay, um, on a graph paper, purpose of a graph paper for you is for you to use the line. Okay. Graph this. It's a plus zero, right? You remember that? If there isn't any y-intercept, it starts at zero. So zero is there. And then you, the slope is one. So you go up one, right one, okay, from there, all the way, and do the other way. And then um, this is 5x plus, and it starts at zero also. Okay, so go up five over one. And we can go down 5 over 1. Connect the dots. One solution. At 0, 0. Okay. So the solution is at 0, 0. Okay. So 8, you graph. So for those of you who don't know how to graph yet, um, number 8 gave you lots of graph paper so make sure you use them um, the way it should on there starting at 4 and slope is 1 over 1 okay 
and then um, the other one. Anyway, is it me? The other one starts um, on number eight. Starts out at one. K15 right there. And okay, that's how you graph. This one you start out at one, go up one, and write two, okay? Um, and the solution is going to be when you graph, it's going to be 2, 2 for number 10. It's going to be at 2, 2. number 12 the solution is going to be at um, 2 3 if you have questions see me at um, ask me in class number 14 okay number 14 um, I'm going to clear this out so I can do number 14 well okay I'll do the answer is seven weeks, okay? Suppose you have $33 in the bank. You start saving $10 each week, $55. Suppose you have $55 in your bank account. You start saving $10 a week. Your friend has $20 in their account and, start, and is saving $15 per week. When will you, you and your friend have the same amount of money in the bank? So when will they intersect the two lines? The best thing to do here is you'll learn this um, Monday is use substitution. So your your equation is y equals to fifth. Um, you save ten dollars each week, right? Plus um, the fifty dollars you have in there. So each week you put ten dollar, ten dollar, ten dollar. That's why it's times times w, right? Or we could want to use x. Okay, so you need to define your variable x x equals to the number of weeks, right? The other one, your friend's equation is your friend starts out at $20 and starts saving um, $15 a week. So each week she puts $15. Eventually she'll catch up with you because it's more. One way to do this you'll learn is without graphing is to use substitution. That means to take this equation because it says y equals to that put into where y is right here. So you get 10x plus 55 equals to 15x plus 20. Okay? Minus 10x minus 10x. You get 55 equals to 5x plus 20. And you subtract 20 from both sides. And you get um, 35 equals to 5x. Now, x is the number of weeks. We didn't define the variable. Always define what your variable means. So, x equals the number of weeks. And y is the amount saved. Okay. Divide by 5, divide by 5. It takes them 7 weeks for them to save the same amount of money in the bank. Okay, seven weeks for um, your friend to catch up with you in the saving. So we'll learn more about that on Monday, Tuesday, of next week. Um, all right, then number um, 16, you need to graph it again. Okay, um, make sure that um, let's see. Erase this. Put it here. See what happens if I take another picture. Okay, Let's see what happens. Camera. 
so that you can see um, what I'm seeing. All right. Yay, it's on another paper. Good. I'm going to enlarge, uh, make this bigger. It's bigger this way. I wonder if I can move it. No? It just doesn't let me move, huh? Okay, we'll make it bigger this way. Okay, this is oh, oh, yeah, it does let me move. Awesome. Perfect. Okay, there we go. Number 16. Um, tell whether the system has no solution or infinite solution or infinite mini solution. Okay, so all right. Use graph each system. So they want you to graph it. So in order to graph on number 16, you have to make solve it into slope intercept form. Right? Let's practice solving into slope intercept form. Okay. You got x plus 2y equals to 10. Um, you need to make that in slope intercept form. That means there's a plus sign on the y side, you need to subtract. You get 2y equals to 10 minus x, divide by 2. y equals to negative um, x, or a, a 1 right there, negative 1 over 2x, plus this is a 5. Okay, graph that. And then, um, the other equation is um, 2x plus 4y equals to 10, e minus 2x. Yeah. 4y equals to 10. Um, Divide by 4, y equals, this is a half, negative 1 half, x, and um, let me double check my work, um, we're number 16, yep, alright, plus we reduce this to 5 over 2, or 2 and 1 half. That you can make it into a mixed number because you have to graph. Okay. So, when you're graphing, we know this is, it has no solution because already we know the lines are parallel because it has the same slope. So when you're graphing, I'm going to do a simple graph, okay, for the first one, starting at 5, right there. You go down 1 over 2. Go the other way. And the other one, you can do the same, starting at 2.5. 2.5 would be right there. You go down 1 over 2. Go up. And then notice the two lines will never meet. Okay. You do that for um, 18 also. Um, now without graphing on 20, 21, 20 and 22, you don't have to graph, but you have to solve the same equation, all right? Um, when you graph on 18, I'll look for your graph on um, number 18. Okay, I'm not going to graph it. You're going to solve um, this one for slope-intercept form and then graph it. Okay? Um... All right, and then you'll get the answer of no solution. They're parallel lines, okay, for number 18. Number 20, 
without graphing, you need to solve that into slope-intercept form, you will find that you'll get the answer of, um, I believe, infinitely many solution on number 20. Mm -hmm. Number 20, they're the same fraction, they're the same equation. Number 22, this question um, is also infinitely many solution. Solve it for slope intercept form. I'm going to look for it in your work. 24, um, which graph shows the solution of system below? Okay, no, that's 23. 24 is my next page. I'm not sure what I assigned you. When did I stop? Hmm. I'm not sure if I assigned you any more than this. Okay. And then, um, I, again, did not bring it. I think I assigned you these, right? I would have assigned you the review question. Um, well, ask me tomorrow if I didn't cover something or if you're not sure of the answer. I, I don't, I'm sure I probably gave you these questions right here. Um, uh oh, what happened? I think it got stuck. Uh oh, I can't move it anymore. Oh, undo, undo, undo. This sucks. It's permanent now. Anyways, uh oh, let's retry this. I don't think you have to do 24. I don't remember copying it. Okay, let's let's try this one. Do it again. Because I can't read that. Oh, there goes your answer. Uh, that should help you, right, with the answer. I'm going to do um, number 44 and then 48 and see how that goes. All right. All right. 44. Do this on graph paper. 5 is greater than absolute value of x plus 3. Because of absolute value, okay, split it into 2. First, keep it the same before you do the negative. Switch the inequality from greater than to less than sign when you have one negative. And the absolute value goes away. Minus 3, minus 3, you have 2x. And this is minus 3, minus 3, get negative 8 x. Okay, graph it. Okay, you got negative 8 and then 2. They're both open circle. Let me double check. It's an and statement. I got it right so far. Okay, the reason why it's and numbers that are greater than negative 8 is negative 7, negative 6, negative 5, negative 4, zero, all those numbers in between going in this direction and then two is greater than one, zero, oops, 
etc., etc., going in this direction. This is an and statement, so you write a compound inequality. H less than x, less than 2. Okay, that's... I hope I give you these as an assignment. Okay, and then also um, I'll do... Let's say 50. Okay, number 50, the answer is 1 there. Parentheses around that. Um, 6 parentheses, 2 plus x equals to, um, multiply that, 18x, 12x plus 6, 12, no x, just 12, plus 6x minus 6x, 12x equals to 12, divide by 12, That's how they got one as an answer, okay? So those are the answers, okay? I think this is the easiest way for me to show you the answer, right? The red ones. 